Earlier this month, the mayor of Dawson Creek proclaimed the week of February 14th to 20th as Women's Institute Week in the Mile Zero City. In tonight's Around the Peace, I introduce you to three long-standing members of the Landry Women's Institute who explain how the organization started, where it's headed, and why you should get involved. The women that I've worked with in WI are very good friends and like sisters. We are instrumental in a lot of women's movements all over the world. We try to study different topics like of course agriculture, right? And then there's health and welfare and there's Canadian industries. I joined in 1956 and so I've been a member always since then. Um, I joined as a very young bride and it seemed the thing to do uh, because my mom-in-law was a member and um, so uh, it just became a very comfortable place to be, um, to take your babies and they could play on the floor and get to know each other down there on a carpet or on a rug or a blanket. I joined because my mother was a member and she was very, uh, well she was really enthusiastic about all Women's Institute problems and so on and uh, education and health and things which we are all interested in. So that's what got me going. Well why I wanted to join many years ago as you hear by my institute, I'm an immigrant <laughs> and I wanted to learn to quilt. So that's why I started and then when I got in there, sure I liked the sewing bit but I got a lot more interested in the structure of the organization. We have been going in Canada since uh, 1897 and in BC we've been over a hundred years. We started here in 1909. So we have been going a long time and it spread from, from Canada to the world. We work under a, uh, a provincial body which is affiliated with Canada and then the worldwide organization to do with women and children basically, you know, for their welfare, like the organization started over 150 years ago, I believe, and it was more or less to educate the farm women on safe cooking procedures, pasteurization of milk, etc., and to give them more of a social life, whereas now we have still, a good number of our members still live at, on the farm. Some of us have retired, but we still live on the farm, some live in town, so uh, we try to keep abreast of what's going on and uh, talk about the community it starts with. I, th I think that's, that's my idea. I like to help in the community as much as I can. We're a huge organization of strong women and so we do have issues and, and one of our issues now is food sovereignty and se food security in this climate change. And so we're on to that issue, we're on to health issues, um, medical care and uh, medical premiums that seniors are charged in BC but not in other provinces. Those kinds of issues uh, we put on the forefront, so to say. We, we like to support the transition house here in town. We collect things at Christmas time, like uh, something that the women and children can use and give it to them. Uh, we try to learn something different all the time and people bring different things in to talk about. I believe in their, in their uh, ideas that they have and, and I believe in the things that they do and I try to, would really like to keep things going and we're trying to interest new members so that we could, could keep things going because we're all getting older now and uh, it would be nice to have younger women joining and maybe they will when they hear how much we do. There's support there for them in whatever they want. If they want to do um, you just name it, WI would be ready to do it, like we would be ready to, to put on a canning uh, clinic, we'd be ready to put on a LEFSA clinic, we'd be ready to put on a wellness clinic, uh, we've had uh, spa days, uh, it's what they would want, we would do. Like a lot of um, volunteer organizations, numbers are down. 
you know, we realise the young mums of today, they're so busy. Not that we weren't, but it was a little different. It's always home and family. Home and country is our motto. And so family is very important to us. Um, but we do take on issues worldwide as well. Adelaide Hoodless was the woman that started us in WI, and she thought that rural women needed uh, more education because her she lost a baby son from drinking impure milk. And, of course, people in those days didn't have much education on the farm, and so she thought that that needed to be be worked on and so that's what she started it. If you'd like to come and, and join us and you know you could maybe learning like I believe a lot of younger people now are interested in the good old-fashioned um, uh, canning and uh, well we, we called it home ec but it's still I guess it's still called that but you know to come and learn how to do canning or sewing or what you can do within your community to help how to learn to write resolutions makes you a lot more assertive. I guess I grew up in WI because I think I was 17 when I joined so I grew up a lot. Um, I learned that it was important to, to have a voice that if you felt strongly about something that you best speak about that. Um, running meetings, public speaking, meeting people from around the world. I've been at federal, federated conventions. Um, I've been at ACWW area conventions, been to ACWW convention where the world met, uh, and that was in Africa many years ago. And through each of those, I, you just have to marvel at the strength of women. Um, women collectively and some women individually and so uh, when you feel that you have that strength in an organization you feel you can do something because alone um, you may feel strongly about something but alone really you don't have the strength but collectively you do to make a difference. For Around the Peace, I'm Ashley Weeb in Dawson Creek.